gentlemen, Ari Matzi, everybody. Let's go! I'm the diversity part of the show. Uh, I am. Uh, <laughs> I am from Estonia. Okay. Uh, if you don't know, I'm not angry. I didn't know Toronto was a thing either. Um, <laughs> Hopefully, uh, I have to say, uh, you know, I am from Estonia. Hopefully, it will still be Estonia when I'm going back. <laughs> you never know. I do have to say, if Russia does decide to attack us next, uh, I hope it's in the next two weeks. Because uh, I'm here. Read your refugee visas real well. When I am in, I am in gold the raptors. <laughs> Put a beaver up my ass, give me maple syrup, get it on! <laughs> How's the fries? Good? Perfect, okay. <laughs> Good, good. Fries taste good when there's democracy. <laughs> uh, I, I, uh, I, I went to Vancouver a couple years ago. I haven't been to Canada for a while. I forgot how goddamn expensive it is here. I went back home, got used to a certain lifestyle, you know, like breakfast. <laughs> I'm on that economic fast, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so expensive. I'm uh, staying on Airbnb, I'm paying 3200 for it. Jesus fuck. You know how much... <laughs> Three... You know how much money that is in Estonia? If we send that money to Ukraine, we're winning the war. You know what I'm saying? That's like 17 missiles. <laughs> 3,200 for the month. When you're paying that much for Airbnb, you can't even like leave the spot. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> like when I'm not there, I feel like I'm losing sweet, sweet Airbnb time. <laughs> like right now, I'm calculating. I'm losing 60 bucks. Every time I'm not there, I feel like I left the hooker alone. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> he dropped the fry and that was... <laughs> yo, yo, 3,200 with a $600 cleaning fee. <laughs> Who the fuck is cleaning this apartment? <laughs> I need to see this crew. This better be the Wuhan crew that shows up. Six hundred dollar cleaning me! I need uh, this Filipino family better. I want to see everybody go to college. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> And it's not even nice. I could pay three grand if it was like a nice place with a view. A bell boy, good evening, sir. You know, that sort of shit. But it's like a basement apartment. They call it a basement suite. There's nothing sweet about the basement. That's how you know your economy's fucked. When you're willingly moving to basements. Oh, it's so cozy. <laughs> How rich do you have to be in this country to feel like a person, huh? <laughs> How much money do I gotta make to be a bomb crown? Huh? <laughs> you ever live in a basement? 
basement is fucked up. Because like there's other people above you. You hear like them flush, you know. <laughs> Feel like a rat just under. Like I'm already a different guy than the guy who checked in. You know what I'm saying? Like, because it's mentally, like I've been there for two weeks. I'm already fucked up. Like I'm already developing a hunch. You're like under, like I took a shower the other day. I heard the guy above me take a shower at the same time. And I'm like, is his primary water my secondary water? It was pretty soapy. It's fucked up when you're in a basement, right? Like masturbating is embarrassing enough. You ever do it in a basement? You have that fucked up window where you see other people's feet. <laughs> like even if I meet a girl, I don't have the confidence to bring you back to a basement. I'm like, I will Uber to the address. You want to use the main door of the house? I gotta be like... <laughs> That's for people. You make up. You go like behind the bush. <laughs> if you're a girl that comes to a basement apartment with an Eastern European. I don't even want to fuck you. I want to be like, who the fuck raised you? you know <laughs> I was uh, walking back to my shit fuck Airbnb one night. Uh, it's a couple nights ago. I had that weird moment. Um, my guys will know what this feels like. You know when you're like it's getting late at night and it's dark outside and you're uh, like walking the same direction with a woman you don't know and you're like behind her and it's getting weird. You know like she turns left, you turn left. She turns right, you turn right. And you're kind of in a rush. <laughs> but you don't want to seem like an assailant. <laughs> it's always weird, right? Yeah. You feel that tension build, right? You know when you start to that you start to see that she like notices you as well. You see their body language change, right? It gets weird. They start like clutching the bag, warming up the hamstrings. <laughs> And then there's always that really tense moment, you know, when they like finally like look. <laughs> and now you like gotta try really hard to not walk like a rapist. <laughs> You're like, would a rapist do this? I have been trying to get some pussy. It's very difficult. It's very difficult for an Eastern European, right? Because uh, I don't have a uh, personality. I don't have that charisma, right? You know, some dudes like have a hat. <laughs> A thing, you know, they're like, oh, I'm in a band. <laughs> Every time I'm at bars, I'm just in the corner with my Eastern European energy. Ha, <laughs> ha,
I come up to you, I sound like a vampire, right? I know, I'm interested in pussy. Yeah. I don't know how to, I've always, um, I always find it hard to, when you're at a bar approaching women, I always feel creepy. <laughs> Isn't it creepy going up to random women at bars? Because I feel creepy because we both know what I want. <laughs> like every time I approach women at bars, I feel like America when they talk to the Saudis. <laughs> Like we both know, I want to drill you. <laughs> but there needs to be diplomacy. <laughs> I'm always so scared. I'm, always, I'm, I'm really scared of rejection. That's what I'm most scared of. I hate that shit, right? Some dudes are really good at that. They'll go up to a girl at a bar. She'll be like, me, you, never. <laughs> They should be like, all right. <laughs> Statistics. <laughs> like, if you say no to me, the night is over. You know what I'm saying? I'm going back to the basement. <laughs> I understand. Um, I went to Spain. Anybody been to Spain before? Oh my God, what a beautiful country. Uh, no pussy there either. I went to, I went to uh, Barcelona. That's how you have to say it too. Barcelona. That's how they welcome you at the border. They go, welcome to... <laughs> welcome to... <laughs> you have arrived. Over your fries. <laughs> Spanish man, so sexy, huh? First night I was there, I saw this guy who walked past me, you know, he had like a sculpted beard, a haircut, <laughs> the whole thing, right? He walked past me, he smelled so good, I literally closed my eyes. <laughs> I like looked back at him, he was already looking back at me. He was like, <laughs> everybody's sexy in Spain. The homeless people are like Antonio Banderas. <laughs> they come up to you like, hola. <laughs> you smell some jam. It's hard to feel sexy in a country when the guy next to you is like stirring mojitos with his feet. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was in, I was there for two weeks. At one point I did meet a girl. I met uh, a chica, una mamacita. <laughs> and um, we were talking, I uh, went back to her place. She had like a house party there and we're on the couch. We're talking, you know, just cute, getting to know each other. You know, I'm sweet. <laughs> Cause I be like that, you know. So we're talking, getting to know each other. And then a guy next to me pulls out a guitar 
<laughs> All guys know this feeling, right? You know when you're talking to a girl at a party and then somebody pulls out the guitar? You're like, fuck! <laughs> Because as soon women hear melody, oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! It blows your mind. He starts playing the guitar, another dude starts playing the drums. Everybody starts dancing, I'm the only one not dancing. Right? I get a little high, I look at people being so comfortable, so sexy, and I figure out, you know why Spanish men are so sexy? It's because they grew up on the guitar and the drums. Those are sexy instruments. Of course, you're gonna feel comfortable. I'm Eastern European. We grew up on the accordion. <laughs> you ever hear the accordion? It literally sounds like communism. <laughs> Every song is about a man that went lost at sea. No, I'm serious. Put your ear close enough to an accordion, you can literally hear it go, there is never enough bread. <laughs> I'm 31 now, I'm going through some... Uh, when you're 31, uh, you know, as a guy, you, used to, you go through your first physical changes of your life, right? The bad ones. I am like losing my hair. I, I got this one, you know, the... I think this is the better one though, no? Like, because then you can at least address, you know, like every morning I get to see the tectonic plate. I get to be like, fuck, fuck, fuck! Because I think, I think this is the bad one, no? You know, the nature's yarmulke, you know. Because <laughs> then, like, somebody's got to tell you. You know, like, hey, you. That guy now. <laughs> I gained some weight during COVID. I'm just losing it now. It's just, I had that bummer moment. You know that, uh, you know, guys, when you're like gaining weight and you slowly see your dick disappear <laughs> over a hill, you know. It's like the saddest sunset of your life. Your dick is like, oh, hopefully we meet again. <laughs> It's such a bummer when men get fat, right? Because when men get fat, what happens? We lose our dick and we die young. Right? Because like, I'm also like a chubby chaser. I have to say it's not too much of a chase, but... You have some snacks, you're good, you know what I'm saying? Women. They're fun, they fart, they giggle. And when, I mean, let's be honest, when women get fat, what really happens, huh? You get more tits, more ass, more delicious. You can never put too much syrup on a pancake, you know what I'm saying? I'm single. <laughs> I think dating is fun. It's just, it's a lot of pressure for a guy, right? Especially because I'm 31. I'm just tired of the, you know, the first date. You know, that. Because <laughs> I'm 31, there's so much information for you to download, you know, like... 
I just want to get to the part where we both shut the fuck up. <laughs> like, you know when you go to a restaurant and there's like an old couple, you know, they're, they're like 70 years old and they're just eating soup in silence. <laughs> there's no stories left. <laughs> they're not like, remember that one time? Yeah, I was there. <laughs> That's what I want. Because it's a lot of pressure for guys to make a good date, right? It has to be magical. Like, uh, I recently took a girl to see a movie, right? Uh, big mistake. Here's a suggestion for guys. Uh, watch the movie before you go and see the movie. I pick, a, I pick the movie. I picked uh, like a, a Sundance Festival movie. I'm like, oh God, it's artistic. It's called Slalom, right? The poster had a guy on a mountain coming down with skis. You know, I'm like, bitches love mountains. It's gonna be a great move. We go and see the movie. It's a three and a half hour movie about a ski instructor that's molesting his students. You know how strong my game has to be? to get the state back on track. The movie ends, I'm traumatized. I look over to her, she liked the movie. That's why you can never let women choose date movies either. Cause you love some miserable shit. Women will always choose a movie about a widow chasing her dead husband's memories through letters in Ireland. <laughs> Guys, pick good date movies. Like I say, that's a good date movie. An easy plot. Where's the peanut? You know. The only time I've ever let a girl choose a movie I had a date, she comes over to my place, I cook the pasta, she downloads the torrent. <laughs> I finish the pasta, we sit down to watch the movie, uh, she picked A Fault in Our Stars. Oh, they both have cancer? When do I start fingering you? Before or after the chemotherapy, huh? You guys were a great crowd, I'm sorry.